Mr. Cheney's transplant was a little more complicated because he had prior surgery. Going back into the chest can be a little more difficult. There's risk of injury to the heart, which may be adherent to the sternum or the breastbone. Then mobilizing the heart in order to be able to cut it out becomes a little more difficult because there can be a lot of adhesions or prior scar. So the risk of bleeding in particular is a little more, uh, is higher than it would be otherwise. As you know, there's only about 22, 2300 hearts available in this country. There's probably 100,000 people who could benefit from it. So there's a big imbalance between supply and demand. So you've got to be very choosy, very picky about who you offer this heart to. There are several factors that dictate when you're going to get your heart. Perhaps the most important one is how sick you are. The sicker you are, the higher you're up on the list. Number two, what your blood type is, very important. The rarer your blood type, the quicker you'll get your heart transplant. The other, the other criteria that plays a role is the size of the patient. So you can't put a kid's heart into a big patient or the other way around. So it has to be a match in terms of body size, height, and weight. So those are the three main criteria. Currently, many programs don't have an age cutoff anymore. As you know, medical therapies and therapies for heart disease have evolved and have become uh, so good that people who used to die from heart attacks, for example, now live into their 70s and 80s and 90s. So what's happened is you get a lot of vibrant, robust individuals who make it into their 70s with heart disease. And the question is, do we offer the heart transplantation or not to these individuals? And it's a big question. And we really found out that 70 might be the new 60. What do I mean by that? Their survival was very close. Half of the patients lived nine years after transplant. That's pretty remarkable, whether you were 70 or 60. The complications were exactly the same. The only interesting one was that 70-year-olds, what we call septuagenarians, had a lesser incidence of rejection, which is fascinating. And now we know this is called immunosenescence. What does that mean? That your immune system reacts less vigorously to foreign tissues. So, in fact, being older, provides you a certain advantage. And it's very possible that if we go on transplanting older patients, they might need less of the medications that we use to prevent rejection, which in fact have a lot of bad side effects.